Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Redd. Today, my guest will be Chief James Clack of the Baltimore City Fire Department. So don't go away. We've got a great show coming up. Joining me today is Chief James Clack of the Baltimore City Fire Department. Chief, welcome to the show and thank you for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. Tell me about the Baltimore City Fire Department and the services that our, our fire department offer the community. Well, everybody knows that a fire department puts out fires and mm -hmm. that's our uh, primary service. It's what uh, we're known for. Right. But actually 70% of what we do now uh, today is emergency medical services. Is that right? Responding to people that are ill or mm -hmm. injured, traffic accidents. Uh, so only 30% of what we do is fire and everything else. 70% mm -hmm. is EMS. And, and is that because the, uh, the amount of buildings have decreased in the city or what, what do you attribute that to? It's a change in the service f uh, that started actually in the late 1960s. Mm -hmm. So it's been a change that's evolved over 50 years where fire departments in the 1950s, 1960s, all they did was put out fires and respond to natural disasters and things. Right. We took on this role of being the primary medical providers outside the hospital mm -hmm. starting in the early 70s, right. and it's really evolved into our primary business. Um, in fact, some fire departments have changed their name uh, to fire and EMS department okay. or uh, rescue department, trying to encapsulate this new role this primary role in EMS. So have you had to increase your amount of medic units in the in the department? Absolutely. Uh, we went from having none. Right. Uh, actually, Baltimore was one of the first uh, cities in the United States to have uh, dedicated ambulances right. uh, way back in the early 1900s. Right. Over the years, we've added medical resources. Right now, we have 24 mm -hmm. full-time advanced life support medical uh, transport units in the city at all times. Oh, okay. We add a few more during the day, but right. it's a very, very busy service. Now, has that also um, changed the type of training that the firefighters have? Are they now EMS and, um, tell me about the training for the firefighters. Absolutely. When we hire somebody, uh, we give them fire training, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the big components now in basic training and ongoing training okay. is emergency medical services and learning about how to treat a patient from the time we find them until we can deliver them to the emergency room. That's, that's amazing. Now, a lot of people always said that um, they would call for a, an ambulance and a fire truck would show up. Why, tell people why, that, why is that? Well, we only have 24 medic units, right. and it's, it sounds like a lot, but it's a big city, right. a very busy system. Right. We have 55 fire companies, mm -hmm. so we can get a fire truck to a scene faster than we can get the medic okay. unit there. So mm -hmm. all the firefighters are trained to do uh, emergency medical service, treat people until we can get a medic unit there to take them to the hospital. Great, great. Now, Chief, you came from the Midwest. Is that true? And, That's and, right. And, and tell me how coming from the Midwest um, compares to the type of uh, city Baltimore is. Well, I actually um, grew up in California. Okay. So my, uh, my youngest years, until I was 17, were spent in central California. Okay. Uh, moved to Minnesota uh, at 18 years old and stayed mm -hmm. there until four years ago. Uh, and then came out here to the East Coast. So I've lived all the way across the country. Okay. The Midwest is a little different. Uh, firefighters uh, are the same wherever yeah. you go. Yeah. Uh, and I've learned that as I've traveled around the country right. that, you know, the same issues, the same job. Right. Um, the political environment is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, being so close to Washington, D.C. and kind of the hub of politics in the United right. States, uh, there's a little bit different culture here than there would be, say, in Minnesota, right. Minneapolis, where I came from. Okay. Now, um, 2011 seems like it was just, we were just starting it, and uh, it came and went in a, in within a blink. Um, tell me, were there uh, any projects that you had on your agenda that you needed to carry over to 2012 um, that you didn't get accomplished in 2011? Well, a lot of the things we have going are, are behind the scenes. Right. Uh, we received a grant at this time last year to upgrade our self-contained breathing apparatus, the tanks the firefighters mm -hmm. wear. We're still in the process of trying to buy those. Okay. Uh, we should have that done this year. So that was carried over. Okay. Uh, we're also uh, putting a new CAD, computer-aided dispatch system in, okay. along with the police, that's going to allow us to see, 
in real time where all the fire trucks and medic units are around the city. Now, how will you do that with the with the cameras that are on the street, or there's actually a a unit in each uh, fire truck and uh, each medic unit okay. that transmits a signal back to the CAD so that they have a screen that shows a map of the city, okay. and the dispatchers will be able to see where everybody is at all times. So okay. that will allow us instead of sending who we think is closest. Right we will actually be able to send the unit that is the closest to the emergency, okay. and that'll lower our response time mm -hmm. and, and provide better service. That ah. should be in place by the end of this year as well. Okay, so you're catching up with the police department and, and or right along with them with their pocket cop and things like that. Absolutely. Now, do your firefighters, your units carry any kind of uh, uh, iPad or smartphone device or anything like that also? Our units have all laptop computers on them, okay. so they'll be able to display that map. They'll see the same thing that they mm -hmm. see in the dispatch center. Right. Um, that will help for response so mm -hmm. that when two fire trucks or more, we mm -hmm. actually send seven fire trucks to a fire. Right. Uh, when they're responding, they'll be able to see each other, and hopefully uh, it'll be safer when they cross okay. intersections. Break that down for me. What is a, a, a single alarm? How, how many units show up on a single alarm? Well, if we believe it's a fire, right. uh, if you call in and say, hey, we've got smoke in our home, right. smoke alarm's going off, right. we send five engines, mm -hmm. two trucks, and a chief. Okay. And so there's a lot of fire equipment coming, and the reason we do that is when we get there, we want to have the best chance to contain that fire mm -hmm. into the object it started in, and then the room, and at least keep it in the building. Now, here in Baltimore, our structures are built so close together right. that we need to get there and get that fire put out before it spreads through the whole block. Okay, so are there any uh, special projects, or uh, what is your agenda for 2012? Well, our, our agenda is to use technology right. to improve our service. You know, uh, resources are very constrained here in Baltimore. They have been for a long time now. Uh, we are operating with some rotating closures. Mm -hmm. We need to use technology and systems uh, to make us, uh, per, to allow us to provide better service to the right. public. Now talk to me about rotation and closures. I know it's always a hot topic. Uh, tell me about that. Well, we have 55 uh, fire units, uh, fire trucks mm -hmm. basically, in the city um, that are staffed with firefighters 24 hours a day. Right. Because of the budget, uh, we have to close three of those on a rotating basis. So different places in the city, mm -hmm. depending on what day it is, might see one fire truck out of service. Right. Um, there's a total of three around the city at all times. That saves us about $5 million a year in mm -hmm. the budget, mm -hmm. and we use that strategy to save that $5 million that we don't have. Okay. Now explain to people, because one of the things that uh, someone always uses as a, uh, a fight against that is that the city is unprotected or neighborhoods unprotected? Uh, let's do. Let's hold on. I'm going to take a quick break, and we come back. We're going to talk about the continue talking about the rotation and closures. Okay, great. Don't go away. We'll be right back on the pulse. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Again, with me today is Chief James Clack of the Baltimore City Fire Department. Chief, when we took a break, we were talking about the rotations and closures of the fire department. Uh, tell me more about that. Well, rotating closures are a, a way to save money in the mm -hmm. budget, and certainly uh, our budget's been under a lot of pressure, as right. the city's budget has. Uh, what you say when you decide to uh, do rotating closures, as opposed to permanently closing a fire truck, is right. that we think the economy will get better and right. that we'll be able to refund mm -hmm. fund these units again in the future. Uh, so as long as we have hope that we can put those units back in service, right. uh, we want to do a rotating closure so that when the money's there, we can put them back. Sure. Uh, now, you, um, a lot of those houses are, are old. Very I old. mean, I think I remember seeing in some of them where the, the floor st was still cobblestone for the horses to get traction on that. Um, does that have anything to do with you rotating and closing? Do you have you had to close any firehouses because of that? I haven't closed any firehouses okay. in the last four years. Okay. There are several of them that are very, very old, mm -hmm. uh, some from the 1800s. Okay. Uh, and they're in need of replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, we're going to have to figure out a way to build some fire. Are, are there any plans for any new, new houses in the city? Not right now. Okay. Uh, there is a discussion mm -hmm. about uh, the big station called Stedman Station right, downtown right. here. It used to be um, called a super house or something, yeah, okay. The uh, new red line right. uh, may be interested in that building, and okay. if they do that, then we'd, of course, need a new station to put okay. fire trucks in. Right. Now, Chief, I understand you made some uh, promotions of minorities recently uh, in the department. Tell me about that. 
Well, we've had uh, quite a bit of turnover in the mm -hmm. command staff just in the last few months. Right. Uh, the command staff has been very stable. Mm -hmm. uh, the same folks have been in place primarily right. for the four years I've been here. Right. Uh, but several of them decided to retire, mm -hmm. and that gave us an opportunity to do some interviews right. of, uh, of folks. I didn't try and go to the outside at mm -hmm. all. Okay. Um, uh, we looked internally uh, for two new assistant chiefs. Those mm -hmm. are the people that report directly to me. And through an interview process, uh, selected Chief Siegel, who's mm -hmm. the Chief of Operations, and uh, Chief Henry, okay. who became the Chief of Administration. Right. Uh, both of those gentlemen happened to be African American, but I can tell you they weren't selected uh, because of their race. They're both highly educated, sure. and they've done a great job for me and for the fire department for, okay. for a long time. And what are their responsibilities now? Chief Siegel is responsible for service delivery. Right. So all the fire trucks, all the medic units, uh, everything that we do uh, that faces the public, that, that, that serves the public, mm -hmm. is under Chief Siegel. Everything else, the management of the fire department, human right. resources, finance, right. comes under Chief Henry. So it's, it's kind of divided up that way into okay. two. Um, Chief, as you know, I uh, had the fortune several years ago of serving on the Board of Fire Commissions for the fire mm -hmm. department probably some of the best four years of my life. Um, and I got to know and to uh, learn and really uh, respect men and women in fire service. Um, we know that Baltimore City has a, is known for its, its, its large fire department. And uh, how does our fire department compare to other metropolitan cities? Well, we've got a great fire department, and I can tell you uh, from experience mm -hmm. uh, that this is some of the best uh, people that work in the fire service in the country. Right. Our EMS system here right. is second to none. Right. We've got some of the best paramedics in the country. Okay. And on the fire side, we, uh, despite having some pressure, some rotating closures, mm -hmm. we still have four people on every fire truck. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cities have had to reduce to three. Right. And that goes to the effectiveness that those units can demonstrate at a fire. Mm -hmm. So, and the firefighting, I'm telling you, when yeah. I got here and went to my first couple of fires and watched yeah. these men and women operate, yeah. they did a super job yeah. in a very, very challenging city. Right. Uh, the, as I mentioned before, the units are built close together. They're very old. Um, it's a dangerous city to be a firefighter, and they do a great job. Okay, and what other specialized units do you have in the department? Well, we've got a number of specialized units. We have a fire boat. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have four fire boats okay. uh, that protect the harbor. You still have the, the big old fire boat? We have a great big old fire okay. boat from, I think it was put in service in 1960. Okay, all right. Uh, it still works great. We mm -hmm. just uh, did a little bit of work to it, and it's back in service. Mm -hmm. We have a newer, uh, large fire boat uh, okay. that was purchased with grant funds, actually. Okay. Uh, and then two smaller fire boats to get in the little uh, nooks and crannies of the, uh, the waterways. Okay, and I was going to say with the growth of the inner harbor and the, all the boat slips, I guess you really need something like that down in the, uh, in the harbor. Absolutely, and actually the shipping uh, mm -hmm. is increased. The, uh, now we're getting cruise ships mm -hmm. uh, into the harbor, and all of those need protection. Okay. If something was to happen, we need to be there. Now, um, I, I, I recently saw um, the rescue truck. Um, you got a big new rescue truck? or uh, Tell me about your rescue. Uh, well, we have a heavy rescue right. uh, down, that's located right downtown. Uh, great equipment and highly trained firefighters. They do technical rescue, so if somebody's trapped below okay. ground or high angle or up on a building, maybe a window washer, mm -hmm. they have all the training to save people no matter where they are. Okay. Uh, and that heavy rescue, again, is right downtown. and. Uh, staff 24 hours a day. We also have a dive team right, um, right. that uh, we were just called to help out down in Montgomery County. Okay. It's a well-known and well-regarded dive team. We have a hazardous materials unit okay. that goes out when there's any kind of spill of mm -hmm. hazardous materials and uh, deals with that. Uh, we've got Maryland Task Force 2, mm -hmm. which is a regional asset right here in Baltimore to deal with uh, basically natural or man-made disasters. Okay. They've got a lot of equipment to deal with that. Now tell me how you all work with uh, Homeland Security. Homeland Security and, and uh, the Mayor's Office of Emergency Preparedness and the Fire Department are right. very close. Right. Um, as you remember, we had a big snowstorm here. Right. Uh, and right. we worked together uh, to make sure that we got through that event. Mm -hmm. uh, things like the race right. that we just had downtown, right. uh, takes a lot of collaboration to right. make an event like that come off. Now, Bob Maloney works very close with you all in, in that office. Absolutely. Bob came from the fire department. Right, right. right. Uh, so he understands us, and it's okay. really nice to have somebody uh, that understands the fire service. Well, he definitely job. knows, and he's, he's a very dedicated person to what he does. Uh, let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, 
Tell me about the, uh, the the expo that comes to Baltimore. Well, fortunately, Firehouse Magazine, right. uh, which is a national uh, trade publication, has brought the Firehouse Expo here to Baltimore for 28 years. It's been 28 years it's now? It's 28 years, uh, every except for one year. Okay. Uh, they've been here uh, at the convention center. It's grown. It's turned into one of the largest uh, trade shows okay. that comes to Baltimore. It's here every July, and uh, we really appreciate the fact that they show up here every year. Somebody's getting old, Chief, because I was there at the first one. He said 28 <laughs> years. I didn't realize that. Now, what about the thrill show that you have every year? Well, in October, uh, during Fire Prevention Week, we right. invite the public to come out to our training academy free of charge, and we put on a show. Uh, we show them what it's like to be a firefighter. Uh, the police helicopter lands. Mm -hmm. uh, we have games for the kids. There's food available, uh, vendors, and the best thing about it is it's free. Oh, uh, you can better. come out and yeah. bring the kids out, have a great time. It's on Saturday. Okay. Uh, so we that uh, attendance at that just keeps growing as the word gets out. Now, do you still do the, um, the I think it's a, a, a contest that they used to do, fire prevention used to do with the ki um, kids where they would do essays and get an award or something for for their, uh, we do, purposes. and what we've we've turned that into like a treasure hunt. So okay. we give the kids a, a sheet when they get there, and they go around the fire academy mm -hmm. and find the answers to different questions, and mm -hmm. then uh, can win prizes. We name a junior fire chief right. and deputy chief, right. and and all of that. We have a lot of fun with that. Okay, and the uh, and the fire department still goes into the schools that, and talks to the kids about uh, the stop, drop, and roll, and everything else. Absolutely. In fact, we are using firefighters to do more and more of that work. The okay. prevention side. Is also a very important thing for us. Uh, you know, right. we respond when something bad happens, but mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is less, lessen the amount of times that we have fires and uh, people get hurt. So okay. we're out there trying to be proactive right. as well. Now, now tell me, how do you feel that the uh, the services of the department are perceived by the by the community? Well, all you have to do is look at the citizen survey that the city's done the last couple of years to find out that the fire department, out of all city services, is uh, we. It, the citizens feel we do a great job, mm -hmm. and we're ranked the highest of any city department in that regard. Right. And Chief, is there anything that the, uh, that the community can expect new in 2012 from the fire department? Well, I think you're going to see uh, the effects of, uh, of some of the things we're able to put in place. Mm -hmm. We just uh, received a grant on Friday from the federal government for okay. $1.3 million. We're going to be able to outfit all of our firefighters with new firefighting equipment. Right. Um, we're also going to buy what's called thermal imaging cameras. They're infrared cameras so we can see fire behind a wall or we can also find victims. They, they pick up heat. Uh, so even in a totally smoke-filled environment, these thermal imaging cameras allow us to see people that are on the floor that we normally wouldn't be able to see. We'd have to find by touch. So we feel that there's a lot of technology, a lot of equipment that we're able to buy right. uh, that's going to help us do our job better. Right, great. Now tell me uh, about the uh, smoke detector program. Well, we've been installing smoke alarms free of charge in mm -hmm. Baltimore for many, many years, in fact, decades. Right. And uh, thankfully, here in the city, fire deaths, as a result, have been decreasing ever since the 80s. In the mid-80s, we had a year where we lost 88 people yeah. in fires. Yeah. Uh, last year we lost 17. Okay. Uh, that's still too many. Our right. goal is zero. One of the things we're doing, in, a, in addition to going around and trying to convince people to let us put a smoke alarm up, right. is we, are, we have received another grant to be able to buy 10,000 smoke alarms, mm -hmm. and we are teamed up with the 311 system mm -hmm. so that all a citizen has to do, anybody living in Baltimore, right. just call 311. Right. Say, I'd like some free smoke alarms. Right. I'd like the firefighters to come out. We'll be there within two hours. If right? you're going to be home, and that's one of the questions they'll ask. Okay. If you're going to be home in the next two hours, we'll be there. Better than the cable company, mm -hmm. better than, well, maybe not the pizza people, but we'll be there okay. uh, right away. We'll put up a smoke alarm on each floor of your home free of charge. Now, these smoke alarms, a lot of times people would have smoke alarms and the batteries have been taken out for a remote control or something like that. I understand these smoke alarms have a, a long life battery inside of it, or is there some type of new technology in the smoke alarms? There is. Uh, they've got batteries in them now that last for 10 years. Okay. So there should be no need. Uh, you know, we 
for years said change your clock, change right. your battery, right. and change your batteries every six months. Right. These new smoke alarms are putting up, the technology allows them to last for 10 years. So okay. what we do is we tell them, put them up and leave them alone. Okay. Thankfully, the nine volt battery, the little square battery that's in them, right. doesn't work in many toys or anything anymore. Sure. So sure. Uh, that's helping us as well. Now, is it required that the fire department come out and put those smoke alarms up or do you just, if people come by, can they just pick them up themselves? We want to put them up right. because you know, most people probably will go home and put them up, but right. there'll be others that get them and give them their kids or they just don't get up. So okay. what we really care about is that people are protected. Okay. So if we come out, we'll put them up, then we know they're up and that that home's protected. Okay. I'm going to take another quick break, and then when we come back, I want to talk to you about diversity in the fire department. Okay. Okay. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll have more with Chief Clack. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm sitting here today with Chief James Clack of the Baltimore City Fire Department. So Chief, tell me about how the fire department has dealt with diversity in the department over the last years. Well, this is certainly a very, very diverse city. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other element that comes into play is when we advertise uh, for people to come and work for us. Okay. We get thousands of applications. Uh, this is a really... Uh, uh, it's a city that everyone wants to work in as a right. firefighter. Right. We actually go out every day and provide service. Right. A lot of firefighters across the country don't get many calls. We mm -hmm. get a lot of calls. Okay. So the demand for this job is very, very high. My goal is not to attract thousands of candidates from all over the country, mm -hmm. but to find a way to attract our city residents. You know, mm -hmm. we've got s over 600,000 people living in this city. Mm -hmm. We need about 100 firefighters per year. Uh, there's plenty of qualified people right here in the okay. city. So our efforts really are focused on recruiting city residents. And how do you do that? Well, we don't do any recruiting events okay. of non-city residents, okay. basically. We're, right. Our efforts are all focused uh, within the city. We don't exclude people that don't live here. Mm -hmm. All of our money, our time, and our recruiting effort is, is centralized here in the city. And, and do you go to the schools and talk to the kids about future careers in the, in the department also? We go to schools, job fairs, mm -hmm. uh, anywhere that we feel that people that would be interested in a career in the fire service will be. Okay. Um, is there anything you want to say to the viewing audience about the department um, that we might have left out or just uh, you want to touch on? Well, I'm certainly glad to be the fire chief here in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. This is a great fire department. It's a great city, mm -hmm. and I look forward to some great things in the future. Okay. Well, well Chief, um, as you know, I have great respect for the fire department. and. Um, the men and women of the fire department are great people. Uh, I've watched some of them uh, who are now in your command staff from being firefighters and moving on up, uh, especially even uh, Chief Siegel. Um, so, and I know Roman Clark and a lot of those guys are, are wonderful people in the department. And, uh, and I want to thank you for the great job you're doing in Baltimore City. Um, I think that uh, the people realize and know what a great fire department we have in Baltimore City. And, Whenever I go in other cities and I see firefighters, I always brag about our fire department. So I want to thank you for coming on, um, and hopefully you'll come back and talk to us in the future about some things that are going on. And, and whenever there's something else that you want to talk about or something you want to get on the, out to the community, feel free to come back to the Pulse. Well, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here today and to talk about this great fire department, and I'd love to come back. Thank great. you. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank, thank you for coming on the show. Don't go away. We'll have more on the Pulse. I want to thank Chief Clack for coming on our show today, and I hope you, our viewing audience, has learned more about our Baltimore City Fire Department. And as always in closing, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.